People have been telling this nice young lad to go touch some grass, and believe me, I've gotten my fair share of similar comments as well. So I figured today would be a great time to see how fast we can touch grass in the 26 mainline LEGO video games. We're gonna begin with LEGO Star Wars 1 and end on LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, and the rules are very simple. The second that you have control over your character and touch some sweet, sweet green grass, the timer ends. As a quick disclaimer, we won't be covering LEGO Dimensions or LEGO Worlds, as I don't own either and don't feel like buying a console just for Dimensions. You'll notice that throughout the video, each game falls into one of two categories. Games that either spawn you directly on top of grass within one or two levels, or games that make you go so far out of your way to even imagine a blade of grass. So while the beginning of this challenge may seem slow, you might want to stick around to see how this, or this, helps us on our journey. But enough delaying, let's get started. LEGO Star Wars 1 The Video Game is a very boring game to start with in this challenge, as the first piece of grass is found right inside of level 2. Meaning that all you have to do is breeze through negotiations as normal, watch a couple of cutscenes, and well, you're good, calling your time around the 4 minute mark. While LEGO Star Wars 1 was simple, fast, and easy, LEGO Star Wars 2 is anything but. After we get through the very first level of the game, we're gonna actually exit to the hub instead of continuing on with the story. The main reason for this is that there isn't any grass at all in A New Hope, which leaves us with two alternative options. We can head to Dagobah in level 4 of The Empire Strikes Back, or we can head to Endor in level 3 of Return of the Jedi. Because Empire is home to two very long vehicle levels before Dagobah, we're gonna choose the latter. We fight through Jabba's palace as normal, rescue Han, kill the Rancor, and end up right over the pit of Carcoon. There we take down Boba Fett and have to make this super tight jump first try, then make this super tight jump first try, first try, first try, first try, 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 try. These games are meant for children. After that, we're one disco and a target minigame away from touching grass on Endor in a very, very short time of 45 minutes. The 15 of which were spent on that dumb jump because I am very good at video games. If you aren't tired of Star Wars yet, you're about to be, because we have yet another Star Wars game up next. Thankfully though, it's the shortest one. Instead of playing out levels like the past two games, we can drop in player two, head to the arcade, and enter into the Dagobah level, stopping our timer in under 20 seconds. Now, we can finally leave Star Wars and head over to LEGO Indy, which is once again a pretty quick game, giving us grass in the first level right after our cutscene. There are some plants in the courtyard of Barnett College, but it's not really grass and you'd need to enter level 1 to get back there on a fresh save file anyways, so whatever. Completing the trifecta of 1.0 games, we've got LEGO Batman 1, which definitely falls under the more difficult spread of games. In the same vein as LEGO Star Wars 2, we're going to leave the first level right off of the bat, and instead move over to the Joker's home turf, since the only appearance of grass in Riddler's Revenge is all the way in level 4. Joker's home turf is a pretty fun speed level, in which we can immediately do a cool jump to skip the first gate, hug the wall to skip the toxic green goop, and then use a technique called e-gliding to go around the barriers of the level to enter room 2 early. E-gliding is done by repeatedly cancelling and restarting your glide just about every half second, in order to fly further than normal. To finish off the first section, we can repeatedly die in the green goop while building the gears for the door, Look, I promise this is much quicker than the normal route. The next area uses those same extended glides to cross otherwise impossible gaps, and then to do a tight jump off of a lamp to land near the exit door, allowing you to skip almost the entire room. Once again, you can use a super precise e-glide in the following room to just barely make it- oh, nah, right, never mind. Nope, 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 nope. Finally, to just barely make it over to this ledge, open up the door, and you've got to be f***ing with me. Nope, nope, nope. I hate this level. To end off level 1 is a super easy Mad Hatter fight, where you're intended to... What is he doing? Is he stuck? Oh, wait, there we go, I thought I broke it. 
I wonder what happens if I beat him to his door. Oh. Okay, I think I'm uh, softlocked now. Yep, this is great. This is definitely the, uh, the fastest way to go about this. Sorry guys, I just remembered a faster route where you actually open up the demo version of the game and use Cheat Engine to access the debug menu and teleport all the way to 3-2 and touch your grass over here in the second room. I don't know how I forgot about that. I, I'm so sorry guys. What a disaster. In true Indiana Jones fashion, the second game spawns you directly on top of some grass straight away. But believe it or not, we can actually make this process even quicker, with the introduction of something known as No Cut 5. No Cut is a hidden extra in the game that allows you to skip every single cutscene off a fresh save file, which cuts out a ton of time from the run. We can use this in virtually every single game going forward, starting in LEGO Indy 2, where it cuts our time down to just 20 seconds. Immediately, I forgot to enable it in our next game, but that's okay because I forgive myself. Harry Potter 1-4 through 4 is one of the longer games we've played so far, since we have to beat two full levels and do some hub movement in order to find grass. There's nothing in Diagon Alley, Gringotts, or Charms class. But when we get to the bigger courtyard of Hogwarts Castle, we can find some in this small little corner over here. There's probably a slightly faster way to touch grass with a pet warp of some kind, but because you need Leviosa to do just that, requiring you to play through Charms class first, my route can't be that much slower. Speaking of slow, it's time for Pirates of the Caribbean, a game where you'd think grass would be plentiful, but surprisingly, it's a little hard to find. Throughout the first level, you really only tend to walk on stone, wood, and sand, and the underwater section isn't home to any grass either. I spent a good bit of time trying to look in every corner, but it looks like we'll have to head over to level 2 for that. After cannonballing down the door, we get our wish in this back corner with all the shrubbery. The following game, like our Star Wars The Clone Wars, is one that I've never played casually before, which meant that I was kind of at a loss on where we can find grass in this expansive level layout. I did some research and used some prior knowledge from the Clone Wars TV show to try to find the quickest route to Naboo since I figured there had to be grass somewhere in that level. So, after accidentally playing through the wrong level, I backtracked to the Ventress storyline. In this first level, we have to take out various droids while playing as some Stormtroopers and Yoda, which, while slow, doesn't take too long. I lost a bit of time due to the droidicas not behaving as intended in the second section, but it was a minor hiccup. That sends us straight to Naboo, where my theory is proven correct, with a very, very inaccurate time of 22 minutes. The second Harry Potter game is much easier than the first, with one no-cut cutscene skip sending us right on top of some grass in the first level. A definite improvement from the disaster the last game was. But the easy route ends there, as we glide on into LEGO Batman 2. So there were a couple of things that I tried in this game, but regardless of what method is possible, you'll always have to beat 1-1 first, a simple little boss extravaganza. Once you're out of there, you get to play through the open world, sort of. The game blocks off every area besides the theater, which conveniently has no grass anywhere. They put you inside of an invisible box with walls that go up way too high for you to jump over, and try as I might to launch, pause fly, or even wall jump, I wasn't able to get over. Meaning we have to play through level 2, a vehicle level with a boss fight at the end, then do this short car mini game and finally touch grass. There might be some way to get beyond this fence with enough FPS, but that just wasn't happening on my computer. I really hope the third LEGO Batman game goes better than these two. Speaking of open worlds, it's time for Lord of the Rings. Or I guess you kind of do spawn on some grass, but I can't really tell if it's grass, rocks, or something else. So for the sake of clarity, we're gonna go through level 1 as normal. Doing some tag team platforming up to Mount Morador, then spawning in as Frodo and Sam in the Shire, right on top of some very real grass. Following that, we have LEGO City Undercover, another game that I just never got around to playing. But it goes a lot better than the Clone Wars did, since you spawn just a few yards from a nice patch of grass. 
something I find unique about the LEGO TT games is that a lot of them tend to start not in grass, which is a very uncommon thing when you think about platformer games like Kirby, Sonic, or Mario. This is especially prevalent in their games with original stories, like LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, where the main backdrop of the first level is skyscrapers buried in sand, a combination I don't know if I've ever seen before. Regardless, there's not a ton that we can do tech-wise to speed this section up, just making sure we have the characters where they need to be as soon as possible, and dodging all of Sandman's attacks. Once level 1 is finished, we can jump off the shield carrier and land in some sweet sweet green grass in just around 11 minutes. This is pretty much the same thing in LEGO Movie 1, where all that's required is to beat the first little tutorial section and head on over to the grass to your right. Though our next game can be a bit frustrating. LEGO The Hobbit is a game with plenty of speed tech, and can be fully beaten in just around 10 minutes. Unfortunately, my PC just isn't good enough to do any V-Sync launches in the first level, so our time will be a bit slower. We can compensate for this by working in 1P2C when needed to streamline a couple of areas, like right here in the beginning when hitting this giant rock into the wall, or when pulling down these levers. We can then do a skip that saves over a minute and a half of time if done optimally. Normally when you enter this area, this dude in the middle runs away and closes the door behind him, and you have to do this whole song and dance to open it back up. However, by double jumping and then dropping out that character, you can land behind the trigger that causes this to happen, and simply just walk on through. Mine some rocks, run from a dragon, spawn on the Shire, and call your time in just under 10 minutes. The time has come to finish off the LEGO Batman games with LEGO Batman 3 Beyond Gotham, which is by far my favorite game for this challenge, as it's identical to the Any% percent route and skips nearly all of the game's levels. To start, do a really precise double jump around the invisible wall blocking your path, then use a couple of these random objects to jump on top of this wall's collision. Run around the side and be sure to attack once or twice to avoid falling off, as this collision is very slippery. Use a similar jump technique to skip having to pull down the subway tracks and jump around the metal pillars. From there, beat Killer Croc as normal and return to the Batcave. Now, things get a little weird. You're gonna want to drop in Player 2 and walk to the edge of this bridge, and position Player 1 in front of the broken elevator. Normally, you can't use this elevator until you clear a few more levels. But by opening up the game's map as Player 2, it will actually deload the door. And in this state, you're still able to walk around as the player who didn't open up the map, allowing us to hit the transition up to the larger part of the cave. I know this is a lot to take in, so I'll leave a link to a video I made down below that details exactly how this bug works. Anyways, we're going to use the same deloading technique on the bookshelf in the trophy room, as it allows us to enter the bonus level, level 16, early. Because of us being in the final bonus level of the game, the game assumes we've cleared every previous level, and automatically unlocks all of them. So we can save and quit to the hub, enter any level with grass, and then call our time. It's such a cool speed game. LEGO Jurassic World, Avengers, and The Force Awakens all have grass right inside of level 1, but LEGO Ninjago tends to fall on the longer side. Every time you start a new file, you have to complete the dojo training tutorial, so let's do it. I... Uh, I can't move or do anything. How did I softlock in level 1? Okay, I'm, I'm still able to throw my weapon, so this is technically still possible, just uh, really, really slow. Okay, so once I beat this section, I still wasn't able to do, like, anything, so we're just gonna immediately hold left and fly into these massive blades of grass here, and count it. This game was kind of a train wreck. But what's not a train wreck, though, is LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2, which only has us solving a few early level puzzles as the Guardians of the Galaxy before we're able to rocket boot on over to the grass in this little city area. It's pretty close to the same thing when it comes to LEGO Incredibles, as just a few short puzzles in we find ourselves controlling Frozone and the kids, and can easily slide on over to the grass found in this little mini garden area, just around 4 minutes in. And that brings us to our second to last game in the entire series, LEGO DC Super Villains. 
I figured that for the sake of this challenge, I would try my hand at recreating the Gardener character from LEGO Batman 1 in this game, since, you know, uh, grass and stuff. How did I do? I think I'll name him Guy. Guy Gardener. Make sure to give your character super speed, because, duh, and head through level 1 as normal, blowing up metal, pressing buttons, hitting things as Grundy, getting shot out of live cannons, and of course, skipping cutscenes. Once we finish that, we end up in a closed-off area of the hub, requiring us to do a little bit more puzzle solving as the Joker and Harley, which then opens up the entire hub world to us. Let's just drive our truck over to the first grass we see, and... Oh, that's not good. Well, we're going on foot, boys. Grass, 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 grass. Calling our time at 1814. And now, for the grand finale, the Skywalker Saga. I mean, what did you expect? It's literally not even one level in. With that, we have now touched grass in every LEGO game. Make sure you check out George's channel, as I got the idea from the Touch Grass challenge he did with Mario. And hey, if you're feeling up to it, check out last week's video as well, where I gave my Twitch chat total control over my game. It was a mess. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.